This is Cuba in Miami. Cafecito. Perfect for dunking. Face you guys. Why are you laughing? Is that Domino? Good morning, sunshine. We are going to get a colada, which is a Cuban coffee, a pastelito, and like really absorb the Cuban heritage here in Miami. You might want to stick to the end of the video because I'm going to show you my favorite Cuban. Okay, I don't want to give it away, so I'm not going to tell you what, but like, but you, you might want to check it out, so just wait a little bit. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Karen, and my daughters and I have been traveling full time for the past five years. So I've been coming to the, this bakery since I was little because my dad swore that they had the best pastelitos. We're now back in Miami to visit their dad, some family, and to explore. A staple for parties. If you don't know my background, I was born in Venezuela, but my mom is from Argentina and my father's Cuban. That's how we ended up in the United States. His Cuban side of the family was all in Miami, so we immigrated here when I was 10 years old and grew up here until about 17. You gotta take a number because it gets crowded. And it's a holiday weekend, so it's probably worse. I came back to Miami when I got married, so my kids also grew up here until about eight years old. There is no place like Miami, so every time we come back into town, there's a sort of nostalgia that we get, or for all things Cuban. So not only are these staples for every party in Miami, like you cannot have a party without a array of pastelitos in different flavors, but you can not visit family without getting a box of pastelitos and bringing them along. I feel like you kind of have to. Every time we visited our Cuban side of the family, we would definitely do that. Stop at a bakery, whatever the closest bakery they have to them, and get some. Just don't show up empty handed. So the juice is for me, and I got a colada. Everything else, I'm just gonna show it to you because I can't eat it. So Miami Food Family, which has a YouTube channel, if you guys are interested in all things food and Miami and they're Cuban American. So if you're interested in this kind of topic, definitely check them out. We'll be meeting one of them uh, a little later. But they said that Vicky Bakery has the best Cuban bread. So let me show you what Cuban bread is. And you know, they're on the search for the best Cuban bread in the world. I will debate that this is the only place they sell this kind of Cuban bread. Like, people that have recently come from Cuba say that they don't have this bread there anymore, or at least not like this. And uh, so maybe this is exclusive to, my, to Miami, South Florida, maybe Florida. I, I don't know, but let me show you. So the outside texture is really soft and kind of crispy, like, but then when you cut it, you see that elasticity? So it's really squishy in the inside and crispy on the outside. Perfect for dunking in cafe con leche. Unfortunately, most Cuban places do not have milk alternatives, so that's why I get the colada, which is like just espresso with a lot of sugar. And whipped until it gets espumita. You see that foam? My grandma would talk about that foam all the time. Do you want your cafecito with espumita or without? Now, it brings these little guys because... Coladas are meant for sharing. So just like you don't go get pastelitos and don't bring your family some, it's tradition to buy a colada and you share it with the people at your job, with your family, even people around you, strangers that might be walking by. If you're serving colada, most likely you will offer them a little cup. My game plan is to dunk. Oh my goodness, this in here. Mm. And I'm wearing white today. What am I thinking? Mm. I know I said I couldn't eat everything. I can eat the bread. I can't eat the pastelito that I'm gonna show you next, but this is so moist. Um, it, it's nothing like 
French bread because French bread usually has a very hard exterior coating or is sweet. This is salty. So sweet bread usually has soft coating, but most salty breads have a thick crunchy coating and this is soft and nice on your palate. It's delicious. And they use it to make the Cuban sandwiches, which sometimes they'll squish in the press, like a panini style press. So, so good. I can double dip because I'm not sharing. <laughs> okay, the famous pastelito guano. Again, might just be a Miami thing. So it's a flaky, like a filo dough, stuffed with different things. Now here, not everybody does this. They put the simple syrup coating on the outside when they cook it. Um, they call it melao. Here's where they put the most. You see how shiny it is? Um, that's what my dad liked about it. Some people don't even put any on it and some people like just put just a little bit to make it crunchy on the top But my dad really liked that this was like drenched in the syrup like drenched in the melado So that's the filling this one is the wild and cheese. The cheese is kind of like a cream cheese. And the guava is like a guava jam sort of thing. Really, really flaky. The outside is super crunchy. The inside is chewy and soft. <laughs> I want to say thank you. I had an anonymous person buy me a coffee. So whoever you are, I am so grateful. This colada, I'm going to share with you. Thank you. So traveling really gave me a new appreciation for my own personal culture. And to be honest, I didn't realize how special Miami was until I was away. It's truly a melting pot for all things Latin or Caribbean. So when I come back, especially craving something Cuban, I definitely like to get in touch with people that have watched Miami grow. As time passes, a lot of the businesses are passed down from generation to generation and each generation adapts it a little bit more to what's happening in the country at the moment. The bakery we went to earlier, it's what I would call first generation from the people that arrived from Cuban when Castro took over. So it has a totally different vibe than the place Gina has invited me to today. So Gina is an expert in all things food here in Miami. She shares her experiences through her YouTube channel and social media and happens to be Cuban American. So I had a bakery for 10 years before I started traveling and we ended up working together for a big chunk of that time. And kind of stayed in touch ever since because we are both wonderful entrepreneurs. <laughs> and lovers of food. And lovers, yes. <laughs> I asked her where I could find a good cup of coffee with like Cuban style because I was kind of feeling nostalgic and she's just in this place. It's funny because we always joke around about how when any of us travel outside of Miami, we always want like something Cuban when we get back home. And I know that that happens now with Karen. I didn't know that this is something that happened to her too. So we have an ongoing joke in the family about how long it takes before you land and you need like your first Cuban dish. I chose KO Bakery because it is a Cuban American original. It's also the baby project of a Cuban family that's now Cuban American. It's three generations deep of bakery owners. It started with their grandparents and then the next generation of siblings took Vicky Bakery and then expanded throughout South Florida. And then one of the children of one of those owners or the grandchild of the original owners opened up Kale, which is kind of like a spin-off, if you will, <laughs> of Vicky Bakery. And I just think it's really cool to have grown, you know, like grandparents came and like set a foundation, if you will, of what it was to be a Cuban entrepreneur in a new land. And then each generation has kind of morphed this business into something new that's still connected with the community. And how did you end up creating Miami Food Town? The thing is that we realized that what we really loved was the concept of sharing food and the cultural identity of food and the, and the quality of food with just showing them like the beauty and the power and really the ease of it. You know, how you can eat good food, quality food, cheap food, and bring your family into the environment. And so Miami Food Family was born as a YouTube channel where we're able to play in the kitchen with our kids, 
you know, reach out to the community and highlight places like K.O. Bakery. But look, they have the best Cuban sandwich. That's what it says. We can't talk about all things Cuba in Miami and not visit Calle Ocho. In search of a Cuban sandwich and a mojito. Okay, let's eat here. This is Alex, by the way, the kid's dad, and one of the funnest people I know. Now, when visiting Cayocho, I would totally point out that all touristy areas in Miami either have a really high tax or have extra tip included or have some sort of extra charge. <laughs> so just beware. Not to mention everything will be more expensive. There's plenty of Cuban restaurants in other places. They claim to have the best Cuban sandwich. Now growing up, both my mom and grandma drank this. So being that I'm a mutt, I have no idea where this is from. It's called repajo and it's when you mix coke with beer. And it's the only way I will drink beer. It was delicious and we also ordered a Cuban sandwich, some pork, and a mojito, of course, because the, the things that we had to try. And the sandwich was a little bit different than what I'm used to. So we have Cuban bread, Swiss cheese, ham, and roasted pork, which is kind of like that one. Now, I've never seen it with this stuff inside, but this one has papitas, which are these like shoestring potatoes, and lettuce and tomato. And this? almost looks like salami. I'm not sure. But don't forget the Cuban bread. I have heard it's a sin, but I like adding mayo and mustard. Oh, and it has pickles. It should have pickles. I think it has pickles. Was it good? Sure. Was it the best? Debatable. <laughs> Cuban flag and everything. <laughs> The mojito was not it. It was all bells and whistles. It was very pretty with the smoke coming out and the little flag, but the taste was just not there. And this is one of the cons of going to really touristy areas. But we're gonna try another one. And because of that, we are now on a hunt for the best mojito. As we were walking to our next destination, we ran into Domino Park and Domino Park is pretty epic. It's been around for so long and the city kind of just keeps growing around it. And I personally grew up with my grandparents playing dominoes all the time. So it's pretty cool to see. Just funny how touristy has become. Why are you laughing? Because uh, we're watching the Cubans in their habitat. That's a busload of people right there. Experiment. I don't know. So it is quite curious. Older people come to play dominoes here, and I think they have to pay to be able to play. But the funny part is that, like, they drop off a busloads of tourists to watch the Cubans <laughs> playing dominoes. So it's cute. On the street, you'll find stars, and oddly enough, not all of them are Cuban. I think it's just more like a Latino heritage. When we saw this place, we knew this was going to be it. <laughs> Not only was it super cute and had a total vibe with the live band playing, but it had a giant row of prepped cups for mojitos. And if you don't know what a mojito is, it's sugar muddled with fresh mint, and then it gets rum and lime juice and a sugar cane stick. Now, yes, he's pouring a gin and tonic because I happen to be allergic to mint. <laughs> and then it was 3.05, which is standard time for everybody to have a colada in Miami. I don't know who started this trend, but it is a thing. 3.05 is the time that you have a cafecito. It's your cafecito break. Now, while we waited, we may or may not have danced some 
the live band was so good and such a vibe and we saw some of the waitresses dancing so we kind of hopped into now when I say he's the funniest person I know I mean it because we have shared appreciation for food we have shared appreciation for dance and we just have known each other for so long that we just know each other's quirks and have such a good time so like sitting at the bar and watching how they made this mojito and so much care and love it it was it was epic it was so much fun and of course dancing breaks every once in a while did not hurt now we met in our early 20s and we were both working in the industry so this is something we definitely have in common my gin and tonic was delicious and of course I had to take a sip of the mojito just to make sure it was the best one. Balance between health and pleasure. I think when you're feeling nostalgic there's nothing better than hanging out with old friends and people that truly really know you. It's, it's just like a warm hug. The food that you grew up with and people that you have known your whole life. Now to cap off the evening we had some dessert and a chilled shot of rum by the Bancourt. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's a Haitian rum made out of sugar cane. So we thought it would be perfect paired up with all the goodies we had. And since we were kind of celebrating Latino Caribbean culture, it just kind of seemed to work. And I will definitely be making a Haitian heritage in Miami video soon. So if you want to watch that, please subscribe. Because there's so much beautiful Haitian culture here in Miami. Probably true, but what made it Cuban was all the flavors that they had. And we kept walking because we went to the theater, we saw guayaberas, we saw mocha pots, where they make the cafecito, fedoras. Rafael was Mexican, no? And it started raining on us. <laughs> Rain on that side and look at this side. But that's Miami for you. Across the street they had some artwork of Celia Cruz and some other Cuban artists. And then we ran into a cigar shop, which is one of the things that Cuba is really known for. There is Celia Cruz again. They had some really cool things and they had a cafecito bar. <laughs> because we haven't had enough coffee already. But it, it was really cute. They had a sitting area for people to smoke their cigars and a lot of interesting art and containers and different ways of keeping the cigar on you. Pretty epic. Alex bought a cigar and decided to get it trimmed in this interesting machine. And took a colada shot for the road. Calle Ocho has become super touristy, but we had so much fun dancing and drinking and trying different foods. It was extraordinary and something I would totally recommend that I had never really thought of doing even though I kind of grew up here. Then a few days later it was my birthday and we celebrated and I got sick. I'll link that video in the comments. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! It's my birthday!